Hi, it's Nick from Run Testers, and this is our first run review of the Nike Zoom Fly 5. So some of the key stats uh, on the Zoom Fly 5 are exactly the same as the Zoom Fly 4. That includes the price, which is £144.95 in the UK or $160 in the US. And the drop I think, is still 8 millimeters, even though I think the stack height on the Zoom Fly 5 is a little bit higher. It just looks like that and feels like that on the run, but haven't had the confirmed stack heights from Nike yet. The weight, though, is a bit of an interesting one. So in the Zoom Fly 5, my two shoes weigh quite different amounts. They weigh 304 grams and 324 grams, which is 10.7 uh, and 11.4 ounces. So that's a big disparity, and I don't really know how to explain that but whichever of those weights you take is heavier than the zoom fly 4. so the zoom fly 5 i'm testing is a size eight and a half whereas the size 9 zoom fly 4 i tested was 289 grams which is 10.2 ounces so the bigger shoe weighs a bit less on paper the changes made to the new shoe are exciting ones and ones that we've hoped to see like they've introduced the zoom x foam to the midsole that's the really big one and it's one that everyone was hoping to see nike's piba base springy lightweight foam should be in this shoe, they're, you know, their training partner, fast training shoe, and it finally is now, but it's not in the way that maybe we'd have expected. So you've got a ZoomX core, and the ZoomX foam used looks like the recycled stuff. You can see through that kind of window at the bottom there, it looks like the kind of polystyrene uh, foam used in things like the AlphaFly Nature. But it's just the core of that foam. It does run all the way through the shoe, but it's surrounded by uh, this carrier foam, which is called SR02. It's an EVA foam, and it very much changes the feel of the shoe to the touch. And you know, when you're running compared to just using a full Zoom X midsole, which is obviously very soft and springy, you're getting a little bit of that here compared to the React foam using the Zoom Fly 4. But it's uh, not, you know, not the feeling of Zoom X that you might have come to expect from shoes like the Vaporfly or the Nike Invincible. You've got a full-length plate in the shoe. It's not confirmed as carbon, but it feels like carbon. It's a very stiff plate. And then the shoe has also got a reconfigured midsole to be wider at the heel and forefoot compared to the Zoom Fly 4. It's really quite noticeably wider, which should create more stability. You've got a similar upper to on the Zoom Fly 4. It's almost like a two-layer upper with a kind of thin mesh overlay and then another kind of softer layer beneath that you know wraps the foot the tongue is completely separate in the zoom fly 5 though and it's a bit more cushioned than on the zoom fly 4 which had a slightly more booty style going on uh, in general it's a very traditional upper it's a good upper uh, the fit is really nice with the raised lacing system you get here but it's not an upper in any way that's really designed to cut weight uh, which is kind of a key theme with the shoe that's why it's so heavy there's been decisions made by Nike here all round that don't really cut the weight back. And that extends to the outsole, which you can see has very full coverage on the forefoot and heel. It's more extensive coverage than you got on the Zoom Fly 4 with just the two strips of rubber at the back there. And it's quite a thick rubber outsole with almost mini lugs on there. You know, it's gonna provide good grip. I took it out on the trails today for my first run um, and it should be very durable. But again, it's not really shaving weight, which is what you might expect from a kind of shoe positioned as a fast training partner to things like the Vaporfly. So it comes to the fit, I've got a UK 8.5 in the Zoom Fly 5, which is half a size down on my normal size. It was just the only uh, available press sample was in that size. And it fits me perfectly well. I'm normally, you know, slightly in between sizes. I tend to go for a size nine because I like a little bit more room in the toe box. Um, and in the 8.5, it's um, slightly shorter on my right foot than would be ideal for me. So I think true to size would be probably the way to go. But if like me, you're slightly in between sizes, the half size down seems to fit well as well. So about to head out in my first run in the Nike Zoom Fly 5, which just came in this morning. It's a fairly chunky shoe. Uh, and you interested to see how they feel on the run today. I'm just heading out today for a fairly easy hour. I've got a chunky 30K tomorrow, so there's nothing too heroic on the plan today, but I will try and kind of pick it up a bit towards the end of the run. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they go. So we've run about seven and a half K so far. Um, so I'm quite enjoying the shoe. It's a bit of a surprise. Um, obviously it's an easy run today and it is a shoe that feels quite comfortable for easy runs. It's one of those ones where on your easy runs, you run at a faster pace than you kind of expect in the shoe. So there's obviously a bit of something going on there with the midsole on the plate in there. It's been quite a quick pace today and it's been feeling very comfortable with a fair bit of uphill in the first half. But you know, the same kind of negatives are still there though with as the previous Zoom Fly, which it is still quite a big shoe and it certainly doesn't feel quick in any way. Like we've got all up the pace a bit in a minute and it's not something I'm expecting to be great at. And when I turned up at the run, my running buddy actually turned up in the uh, Pegasus Turbo 2. And it's like, ah, there's the shoe that should still exist instead of this. Uh, but oh well, we'll see. Like I said, I've enjoyed it, but it is comfortable. It's cruisy. It's not gonna be a quick shoe, but could have a purpose for kind of cruising through long miles. We'll see.
So all finished up now, uh, just ran about 14.3k in the hour uh, and I did quite enjoy the shoot today I think. It was quite a different first run experience to Zoom Fly 4 but that was because the Zoom Fly 4 I used for a speed session out the gate, uh, you know, in line with how the shoe was marketed and it didn't feel good at all whereas today I just went out for a nice relaxed easy plod and the shoe actually suits that a lot better um, which is obviously not ideal given the way it's presented. But yeah, it was a nice shoe to wear today. Got into a nice rhythm with it quite early. It was running kind of quicker than I expected on feel and heart rate and enjoyed it. But it's, it's, I don't think there's a lot of Zoom X foam in the midsole. I didn't really feel that at all. It doesn't feel soft and spongy the ride. It's quite a firm ride. It's got a decent roll to it. But yeah, it's not like big and bouncy or soft or anything like that you'd expect from a Zoom X shoe. It doesn't feel like the Invincible, or let alone the Vaporfly or the Alpha Fly. It's it's a strange shoe. Um, I think it's going to have similar problems to the previous versions of the shoe uh, in that if you're pushing this out as a, you know, a fast shoe for fast training or even racing, it just, it just isn't that. It doesn't feel fast. It feels, you know, a bit heavy and cruisy and it's a nice enough shoe to roll around in a run like that today. But tomorrow, like I said, I've got this 30k run where I'll be finishing with 10k probably quite speedy um, and the idea of using this shoe for it just doesn't appeal at all and that should be it's, maybe it's bread and butter, you know, a hard long training run like that and when you compare it to something like the Insulpine Endorphin Speed, um, it's not in the same league. But yeah, I did enjoy it today, but that's probably a question of going out and doing an easy run with fairly low expectations and it surpassed those. So we'll see how it does later on with some harder runs down the line. So my expectations kind of went up and down, you know, in ahead of the launch of the Zoom Fly 5. When all the leaks came out that it was going to have Zoom X foam in the midsole, obviously I was very excited like everyone else. I was really hoping this was going to be almost the peg turbo with a plate. It isn't that, I think it's fair to say. Uh, my expectations, you know, started to dive when I did start to see reports of it coming out about the weight and the fact it was only a Zoom X core. And in the end, I went out on the run today with fairly low expectations. Um, but I did enjoy the run in the shoe. And I think that was really mainly because of the type of run I was doing, which, which was a relaxed easy run you know with no real concerns about pace and when you do that it does tick over very nicely and like I say you do run a bit faster than you think you are on feel I would say it's got a fairly soft and bouncy ride and it does have you know pretty nice turnover that I found it easy to get in kind of sync with on today's run that actually was quite similar to the Zoom Fly 4 though when I was using that shoe um, which I did find quite good for cruising through long runs I think this new shoe is a little bit softer and more bouncy but it's got a similar feel to it that it feels quite good on those runs but this shoe didn't feel very good at all if I tried to do any kind of speed work in it. And I, my, you know, my gut feeling is it's going to be the same with this, just partly because of the weight. But in general, the whole ride of the shoe seems built more for cruising and going long and easy in the shoe rather than really using it as an explosive fast shoe, which is why it's a bit confusing that it's still kind of positioned like that, I think, on the Nike website. So in many ways, I think it's going to be a similar experience to the Zoom Fly 4, which might break down that, you know, if you like the Zoom Fly 4, you're going to get a bit more of the same here, but with a slightly different feel underfoot. I think an improved feel, but not one that radically changes the feel of the shoe. And if you didn't like the Zoom Fly 4, you thought it was a bit heavy and not really suited to anything other than quite easy runs, then that's probably how you'll feel about the Zoom Fly 5. I think that's probably the way I'll end up feeling about it, but I'm not going to make any judgments until I get out there and do some speed work in it and see how it does feel. The problem is that if you do position it as a kind of fast training partner, you have got things like the Sockney Endorphin Speed that are clearly going to be better shoes because they're lighter, faster, more nimble, more explosive, just generally better. So if you, but this really, to me, feels much more akin to something like the Hoka Bondi X or the Adidas Boston 10, which is big, max stack, comfortable shoe that's built more for daily training than anything too fast, uh, which does have some of the kind of super shoe tech in it, like, like a plate, like the foam, but really don't get distracted by those and view it as a kind of super shoe because it just doesn't really feel like that underfoot. It does feel more like a general trainer that's good for long runs. Um, and obviously there are loads of those out there, so it's going to face stiff competition in that area as well. But uh, I certainly think that is a more comfortable position for the Zoom Fly 5 on the market than this idea of it being a fast, cheaper version of something like the Vaporfly. It's just not really how it rides. Anyway, I'll get loads more runs in it, put it to work with some speedier stuff, see how it all shakes out. But at the moment, there have been a lot of changes made to the Zoom Fly 5, and I do think it's improved the shoe slightly, but I don't think it's a radical upgrade on the Zoom Fly 4. And if you were hoping to see something like the Pegasus Turbo with a plate here, that's not what the shoe is, in my opinion. As so it guys, that's our first run review of the Nike Zoom Fly 5. We'll get loads more runs in and come back to you with our full review down the line. In the meantime, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, uh, and we'll see you next time.